Good day everyone, I am Sir Jerickson Chua and welcome to Animation One. So before we start our session for today, may I request all of you to please bow your head as we feel the presence of our Lord through this prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the previous lesson, we have discovered how to check, inspect, and assess the hand tools and equipment. It is an investment to have tools and equipments that are in good condition. If they are well maintained, an animator will be able to save time and money. It is essential to keep all tools in good shape because most of the time, cleaning tools may be the least desirable thing to do after a day of work. Taking care of good tools requires full commitment. Maintaining tools in a good shape would not be difficult to do if you are prepared. This lesson, it covers basic maintenance and safety procedures and tools and equipments and even other paraphernalia in animation and production. It also includes the procedures in cleaning, repairing, and preparing reports for hand tools, equipment, and paraphernalia. It is important for tools and equipments to be subjected to regular servicing and maintenance to keep them running at peak performance. Computers, for example, need occasional cleaning to get the dust out of the cooling fans and heat sink. It is not, if it's not maintained, then it will cost a lot to have it repaired. As the saying goes, safety does not come with lucky, it has to be prepared. Success will always be with you as long as you place safety as the first priority. For today's lesson, we're going to discuss maintaining hand tools, equipment, and paraphernalia in animation. And before we proceed, let's have this activity called Name This Object. So I will be sharing you a description of this particular tool and you're going to identify the tool in animation. The first one is it's yellow on the outside. Brown on the inside with black rod in it. You can make it shorter and shorter every time you use it. So the answer is pencil. Next, this is usually made out of plastic and metal and you can loosen or tighten its screw to replace the metal. So the answer is sharpener. Next, it is made up of wood with synthetic plastic on the tip. It is used to make a certain material to be equally distributed. The answer is brush. Next, you can use this to rotate your drawing with ease. It can be pegged to reduce the movement of your drawing. The answer, what tool? It is the animation disc. For our learning objectives, at the end of the lesson, you should be able to Identify the common malfunctions when using hand tools, equipment, and paraphernalia. Follow the procedures in cleaning, tightening, and simple repair of hand tools, equipments, and paraphernalia. Perform safety procedures in using hand tools and equipments and paraphernalia, 
and show appreciation in the importance of maintaining hand tools, equipment, and paraphernalia. So the key terms for this particular lesson are as follows. We have safety procedures, common malfunctions of tools, equipments, and paraphernalia, the cleaning tools, and how do we report on the property custodian. So we have a question here. What do you think is the reason we need to understand safety in handling tools and equipments and animation? Tools are part of everybody's lives, but it is quite difficult for animators to be fully aware that this may pose hazards. Serious accidents can happen no matter how cautious animators are in taking steps to avoid or eliminate tool-related hazards. Animators must learn to recognize the hazard associated with the different tools they use and safety precautions necessary to prevent those hazards. Mishandling of tools and equipment is a source of injury to workers. In many cases, injury happens because we assume that we know how to use the tools. So what are the general safety rules and requirements? Safety procedure and proper handling of tools and equipments are highly observed when working with any electronic devices in the animation industry to avoid damages or injuries. An animator works with so many things on his or her desk such as lamp, light box, animation disc, graphic tablets, and computer. It is important that an animator is familiar with using each tool correct correctly. With the proper knowledge of the use of tools, and the job of the animator is less difficult. The following safety rules apply to every animator. For the workstation, we need to keep your work area clean so that you can move around on your area. Two, so, dust and papers are fire hazards and can damage your tools and equipment. So we have to make sure that we clean the dust on your table and paper should be on the bin. An animator's desk has lots of paper. Never leave sheets lying around the table so that you will not be... Um, confused of what materials are you going to use and what drawings are being uh, found. Next is you need to place scrap materials in the appropriate containers. Keep your workstation well lit. If you cannot see your work, then you cannot see the hazard. And you need to keep the surrounding free from ignitable materials before working with tools that can produce sparks. So that's are, that are the general safety rules on your workstation as an animator. How about the tools? Um, so you need to inspect first your tools before using it. If it's defective or it's on good condition. Um, you need to check the breakage of parts if there are cracks on the glass of the animation light box and animation disc. And you need to disconnect power source when performing maintenance. And cleaning the computer, the scanner, the digital camera, and other electronic devices. Let's proceed to the common malfunctions when using hand tools, equipments, and paraphernalia. In today's world, computers and other electronic devices are essential to every person to the extent that it became a necessity to have one of these electronic devices. That's why it is a requirement for a household to have laptops and computers nowadays. However, a device wears out due to several factors such as environmental effects, corrosion, vibration, and temperature. Wrong ways of using these devices can contribute to faulty defects. Therefore, knowing how to use and take care of one's device is essential to prolong its usefulness and limit the damages it could bring. These are the common malfunctions when using hand tools and equipment. Wrong use of tools for the task will create bad effect on the tools, so make sure that you use it for the right reason. Too much imposition of force on tools, which is less than its capacity to endure, causes the tool to be unserviceable, meaning you maxed out its purpose and it's not usable anymore. And tools not kept and maintained will be non-functional and difficult to operate. So we should always check our tools before using it and maintain it at its good quality.
Next, we have here the methods of identifying non-functional tools and equipment. To identify non-functional tools and equipment, we should be um, doing inspection such as first visual inspection in which the animator has to see and check the appearance of the tools and equipment. Functionality. Um, the animator has to check the range of operation that can be run on a computer or other electronic systems. Performance. The animator has to check the process of accomplishing a task if the tool can do uh, one thing or another. Power supply. If uh, the animator has to check the hardware components uh, that supplies the power to the electronic devices. And persons involved, the animator has to consult someone who is technically expert on the task that you cannot find solution to that particular problem on the tools and equipment. So let's proceed to the procedures in cleaning, preparing, and preparing um, of reports. So once we have done um, inspecting and we have um, assessed the functional and non-functional tools, let's do uh, a report. So in any work, our safety depends on cleanliness. So having the appropriate cleaning tools is essential when maintaining and repairing computers and other electronic devices used in animation workstation. Using the appropriate cleaning tools help us ensure that electronic components are not damaged during cleaning. Keeping computers and other electronic devices clean inside and out is a vital part of maintenance program. Dirt accumulated from pencil erasures can cause problems with the physical operation of fans, buttons, and other mechanical compo components of computers. An excessive buildup of dust acts like an insulator and traps the heat on any electronic component. This insulation impairs the ability of the heat sinks and cooling fans to keep components cool, causing chips and circuits to overheat and fail. Dirty animation light box on or animation disc may prevent animators from producing good cleanup drawings. So the following common cleaning tools used in animation are as follows. So the first cleaning tool that we have is a lint-free cloth. So this is used to clean different computer components without scratching or leaving debris. So we can also use this to um, clean our uh, displays using a little bit of alcohol and uh, clean the keyboard of your computers and other electronic devices. Compressed air is used to blow away dust and debris from different computer parts without touching the components. We also have brush, which is used to sweep away dust and pencil erasures from electronic devices. Cable tiles are used to bundle cables neatly and outside of the computer. And we also have here vacuum cleaner to suck up dirt and dust, especially if you are creating your drawings and there are a lot of dust um, created by eraser erasers. And we also have glass cleaner in order for us to clean mirrors, glass, and screen of your computer monitors. Okay, so those are the cleaning tools. And how do we clean using these tools? So here are the procedures in cleaning hand tools, equipment, and paraphernalia. The first one is we need to keep hand tools in good condition and clean condition using two sets of rag. One rag should be lint-free cloth to clean or handle electrical components, and the other rag should be oily to prevent frost and corrosion. Two, clean all electrical devices by brushing off any dust and wiping off excess oil or grease with a clean rag. Three, Inspect any electrical cables for dirt and for any chaffing or exposed wires. 4. Clean the computer case and the monitor screen with mild cleaning solution on a damp, lint-free cloth. 5. Clean dusty components with a can of compressed air. Compressed air does not cause electrostatic buildup on components. 6. Clean computer monitor with a soft, clean, lint-free cloth with distilled water and wipe the screen from top to bottom. 7. Clean animation light box with soft, clean, damp cloth to prevent scratches on the glass. 8. 
clean desktop keyboard with compressed air or a small handheld vacuum cleaner with a brush attached to it. And number nine, use a vacuum cleaner approved for electronic components. So those are the procedures in cleaning your equipment, tools, and paraphernalia in your workstations as an animator. Now, how do we now create a report that should be submitted to the property custodian? So the property custodian is the one who can monitor the inventory of your tools and equipment. So the first one is we need to conduct an inventory of the tools and the equipment. So how do we do um, inventory? So you will check the quantity, uh, the quality of the tools and equipment, if it's damaged or workable or if it needs to be replaced. And uh, you will also report here the missing or uh, lost parts of a tool or equipment. Number two, you need to record the non-functional tools and equipment. Number three, we need to segregate tools that are serviceable and non-serviceable. Number four, we're going to report the number of tools and equipment that are not functional but subject for repair. Five, we need to label them um, that are condemnable, meaning um, we will uh, buy a new one. Six, list the missing and borrowed tools and equipment. And number seven, uh, we need to return tools and equipment in the tool cabinet per operating procedure. Okay, now that we have created the report, how do we now submit this report to the property custodian? One, we need to secure an inspection report form from the person responsible. Two, determine the defective instrument based on the report form. Three, you need to replace inspected tool and equipment with defects based on the report form. And number four, use the repair manual in replacing the defective Parts. So that's how you submit the report to the property custodian. So in summary of our discussion for today, we have discussed the different general safety rules for the workstation and tools, the common malfunctions when using the tools, equipments, and paraphernalia, methods on identifying the functional and non-functional tools and equipments. Um, we have discussed also the different cleaning tools and the procedures in cleaning these tools, equipments, and paraphernalia, and how do we report for a property custodian? So, for our practice for this particular lesson, um, we were going to answer activity A and B on page 30 of your book, uh, in which you will conduct a maintenance activity and a procedure on how to prepare a report checklists. And after that, once you have finished with this particular activity, you're going to do PETA 5. So on our PETA 5, you will be given a scenario in the workplace. And your task is to identify ways to perform safety measures in the workplace, identify the common malfunctions of the tools, equipments, and paraphernalia, and uh, find ways on how to repair it. And you will be creating a report that will be submitted to the property custodian. So for the end codes for this discussion, um, we are always doing maintenance and repairs on our lives and making sure that everything is safe and in working order. So this is according to Gary Shields. And just to summarize our discussion for this day, what I want you to do is to create a comic strip or a symbol that represents our le learning for the lesson. So this is an activity called text transformation. And you will submit this using our LMS as my basis for the summary of this discussion. Thank you for watching and I hope that you have learned many things from our discussion. See you on our next lesson. Keep safe and God bless.